Hello and welcome back to another training with Blue Equinox. This is Baron Solomon and this is going to be the overview of network services which represents the core of what Blue Equinox was built on. Um, it's very important for you to understand connectivity because the rest of what we do is built on our ability to recommend the appropriate solution as far as connectivity is concerned um, to our customers. Good connectivity is what separates happy customers uh, from <laughs> disappointed customers and we want to make sure that we understand the technologies and what we're recommending to our clients so thoroughly that um, you know we know for a fact that what we have recommended is the best thing for them so with that said let's go ahead and jump in um, so you know what type of services do we provide from a connectivity standpoint um, down at the bottom, IP voice and data services, um, security services, those are really going to be the ones that we hit on in this via managed firewall, asset management, laptop security, PCI compliance. All of that really, though, can be defined as managed or outsourced IT functions. Um, so the purpose of this is to show you that all of the remaining services that we offer, whether it's virtualization, um, you know, applications as a service, infrastructure as a service from a cloud computing standpoint, access to data centers, um, the managed firewalls, the compliance, all of that is built upon um, the, pl the blue piece that you see down there at the very bottom which is network connectivity and voice traffic. Um, that's what this is about is how do we deliver internet access and voice access to our clients. So let's go ahead and jump into you know some more specifics about the different types of connectivity. Um, so a POTS line is the one of the oldest forms of telephone technology. Um, it started out as simply a copper line, a way for them to um, have one voice line running across. It's the power lines that you see along the road. There's copper up in there that AT&T ran way back in the day. Typically today a POTS line is going to be um, delivered in locations where um, individuals don't really have reliable internet access and they need just a couple of voice lines. You're going to use a POTS line for that. You're also going to use POTS lines or pure copper lines for alarm systems, elevators, uh, a lot of times fax machines just because a fax is an analog signal and when you don't have to make the analog to digital um, back to analog conversion that um, SIP trunking can bring or um, you know that delivery off of a T1 service can bring it just makes faxing a lot more simple and a lot more reliable so you'd use a POTS line for faxing, alarm systems, elevators um, the reason you do it for alarm systems and elevators is because a POTS line does not go down if the power goes out and obviously you don't want your elevator line or your alarm system um, or your you know sprinkler system going down if the power goes out so that's why you would use it for that as far as the actual technology of a POTS line um, you can read on here just you know exactly how many volts and um, you can go online and research where you know where they came from the history of the POTS line more and more people are moving away from POTS lines you will not um, use these frequently um, but they will come up from time to time so it's important for you to understand um, you know what they are and what they can deliver uh, DSL service often mainly mostly is delivered over a POTS line as well um, so familiarize yourself with this term and if somebody says a copper line uh, or a 1FB or a POTS line you need to know what they are talking about so um, a T1 is gonna be your basic business class um, network connectivity solution a T1 is simply a 24-channel, uh, 1.5 meg of data delivery circuit. Um, T1s are brought into the building via copper themselves. Um, that's how they are delivered and handed off. Once inside, um, you know you have a, a router on site that's going to be from the end user service provider that's going to be responsible for telling um, the connection where to go from there. Um, it has 24 channels, meaning you have access to up to 24 um, you know, continuous voice lines at one time. 
Um, or you can use it as dynamic, meaning some of them can be used as voice and some for internet or data access. Uh, and then there's different types of T1s where you just have a PRI T1, which is voice only, a data T1, which is as you know, self-explanatory as it sounds. It's where it's only either internet or data service. Um, and then the d dynamic T1 that I was just talking about where you use some of the channels for voice and some of them for internet access. So an integrated or a dynamic T1 um, is kind of what we just dove into. For most small businesses, they have at some point in time, or large businesses for that matter, used a dynamic T1. Many of the customers that you interact with are going to be using um, dynamic T1s, which is simply where we deliver a business class uh, circuit to the building, delivering 1.5 megs of data um, to the building. And then they tell us how many um, concurrent calls they need to be able to make at one time. So whether it's six or seven or eight or whatever it is, regardless, um, they have access to that many continuous voice channels. And then the rest of the channels are strictly going to be used for Internet. Um, the thing about the Dynamic T1 is that when those voice channels are not being used for voice, they actually can be used for Internet access as well. So they serve a dual purpose. Um, you know, the Dynamic T1 is like I said one of the most popular forms of delivery for small businesses across the country um, you would use these many times for a doctor's office or a, a veterinary office or um, the front desk of a hotel a remote location for a big retail consumer any of those are potential um, dynamic T1 customers uh, the PRI T1 as I mentioned before is a voice only T1 um, it is going to be used in instances where individuals let you know that they need many many voice lines they have to have access to quite a few concurrent um, you know voice paths you're gonna use a, a PRI in situations where there are a large number of employees inside a building um, and they need to have access to um, you know up to 23 analog channels at one time that are gonna be used strictly um, for voice now it's important to um, you know, understand that the um, PRI T1 has 23 available channels for voice and one that is the D channel, which is going to be basically acting as almost the pseudo uh, quarterback or point guard. It's going to be directing traffic, telling, you know, things where to flow. You can use PRIs effectively, as it says down there at the bottom, with DIDs which are direct and we're dialing numbers. Um, you can have many, many numbers for individuals. So let's say you have 50 employees. You can have 50 numbers, 50 DIDs, uh, but if you anticipate that never more than 23 of them are going to be on the phone at one time, you can have one PRI uh, servicing up to 50 individuals. So again, most of the time you're going to use a PRI when you have somebody who tells you they need access to many voice lines at one time and they already have a phone system in place they just want you to give them the access to the number of voice lines that they need data t1 um, as we kinda mentioned is gonna be used for strictly data or internet purposes most of the time nowadays you're gonna use these um, in concurrence with a voice over IP phone system or a hosted phone system um, because you know voice over IP internet protocols what that stands for um, it runs it's you know voice traffic that's running across the internet a hosted PBX phone system like we sell um, relies on internet access so you need a dedicated business class connection because you do not want your connection wavering up and down that's why it's difficult to run hosted PBX across uh, cable and almost impossible to run it across DSL because those connections go up and down um, you know for us it's important to recommend to our clients that they get a dedicated type of connection um, you know f to use with their voice over IP phone systems or hosted PBX phone systems you can also see these used um, in concurrence with individuals who um, need to communicate with a you know particular cloud environment at a remote location and they want a dedicated connection to do that with um, they will sometimes use these for those purposes as well um, but it's again important just to understand that the basic concept is it's really just a 1.5 meg T1 um, T1 access that's only used for data or internet so 
Um, let's quickly dive into just a couple of the basic internet overview options. Cable DSL T1, we're going to dive into that again just a little bit more. And then Metro Ethernet, which um, cable and Metro Ethernet service are becoming the two most popular forms of um, you know, circuit delivery, internet access. So as we go through these, really pay attention in those sections. Um, it's obviously important for you to understand because you're going to interact with T1s on a daily basis. DSL is becoming um, less and less popular. As you can see, mainly it's used, um, you know, mo mainly provided by uh, pot science providers such as AT&T, CenturyLink, Birch. Um, you know, those guys are going to be able to deliver DSL service. Most of the big boys in the business class market, such as Windstream, Earthlink, Nitel, XO that you see down there at the bottom, um, they will provide DSL, but they would much rather provide a, um, a fiber connection, a Metro Ethernet connection, um, or a T1. Cable is becoming more and more reliable every single day. They're able to deliver large amounts of bandwidth for a cheap, cheap cost, which is why a lot of business owners are moving to that. However, there are no service level agreements um, with those, but we'll go ahead and uh, dive in because we're going to cover most of this in uh, the different sections. So, you know, cable providers are fairly straightforward. There aren't many out there that you will interact with on a day to day basis other than. Comcast, Charter, Time Warner, um, you know, sometimes you'll see Megapath and NetWolves, but the ones that you'll mainly interact with are Comcast, Charter, and Time Warner, maybe Bright House, uh, if you're in, you know, the state of Florida, Cox Communications in, in some areas, um, but the ones that we can provide are, you know, given through TBI, We get, that's where we get our quotes for cable services, so, um, you know, you're not going to have to worry about in particular which one to ask for. If you're looking for cable service, you just let them know that that's what you're looking for, and they go out and find the provider for you. So, why would a business move to cable service? Um, well, they would move to cable service because it's cheap, and you can get a large amount of bandwidth for not much money. Um, the reasons why we, you know, kind of tend to shy away from delivering cable service if a company really stresses that they need a um, you know a dedicated type connection or they really have strong reliability needs is because every customer on the same street as you that has cable you're all sharing the same connection meaning if you're using the internet and the guy next to you is using the internet and the guy across the street from you is using the internet you're all going to be pulling from the same pool of bandwidth. It's not stable. Um, it's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So if you're communicating with a server environment or using um, this connection to deliver voice traffic, you're going to experience some issues. Um, you know, there are no service level agreements, as I said previously, associated with cable service, meaning if your cable internet goes down, they are not required to have you back up and running in any particular period of time. Um, it's really just whenever they can get around to it. But cable is becoming, like I said, more reliable. More business owners are moving to this because it's cheaper um, and it's easily available in most areas. So um, you're going to do a lot of interaction with cable internet, learn about it, do some more research on it, um, but that's just kind of a high level overview of what it means to you as a consultant. So DSL, as I said, um, you know, is becoming less and less popular. It just doesn't make sense in most areas for people to move to a DSL when they have cable um, available in most of the same areas. You will see these a lot in remote locations because uh, copper service is available almost everywhere and, um, you know, cable obviously is not. So, you know, a DSL service is just a way for a phone company or a network provider to deliver a higher degree of bandwidth or an internet connection via the same copper lines that they already have in place. Um, these are not going to go up as high unless um, you know, AT&T has some new DSL options where they feel like they can deliver um, you know, up to 60 megs or 100 megs of DSL service. Um, so you know, in rare scenarios you're going to encounter some of that, but for the most part you're going to be looking at 6, 3, or 1.5 um, you know, with a DSL service and with cable services, your download speed is always going to be greater than your upload speed. A typical connection for, let's say, a Comcast business class internet is going to be 50 megs down by 10 megs up. 
Um, again, with DSL, it's going to be you know 1.5 megs down by 384 kilobits up, um, which means that obviously your download speed is always going to be faster than your upload speed. But in addition to that, with the fluctuations that you get in cable and DSL services, you're never going to be operating at full capacity. Um, so for the most part, let's take the Comcast example that we used, 50 by 10, you're probably going to be operating more in the range of um, 26 or you know 30 by you know 5 or 7 is really where you're going to find yourself and the same goes for DSL um, you know DSL can utilize the same copper line that is writing a voice um, that is the way that the service is delivered via a you know POTS line or an old school copper line to the building um, so again not as popular these days often used in remote locations or for small um, like kiosks that need internet access but it is important for you to understand what the technology is and um, how to you know, know to recommend it to your client so uh, Metro Ethernet service is now um, becoming or has become the most popular form of business class internet delivery it's delivered via fiber so um, it can be delivered via copper but only in uh, 10 meg scenarios and that's just every once in a while most of the time when you hear Metro Ethernet you need to associate fiber um, with that with that language it's a dedicated connection you can deliver high you know you know volume of bandwidth 50 megs 100 megs 250 megs um, there are SLAs associated with this type of connection um, meaning there are guarantees that are put in place by the provider to deliver you and guarantee you a certain amount of bandwidth um, and a certain amount of uptime on your circuit um, again this is you know, quickly becoming the most popular version as it becomes more cost effective for businesses to move to um, you know, this is, in my opinion, the best type of connection that we can sell someone today uh, just because we can deliver the highest amount of bandwidth on the newest technology. It's all dedicated. There are all agreements that are put into place. So you're going to begin to encounter these almost immediately and seemingly more and more as this becomes, you know, a more popular way to deliver service. So next I want to cover a subject that you're going to hear um, COS class of service this gives us the ability to um, you know assign different priority to data packets inside a bandwidth stream meaning if a customer says hey our voice traffic is the most important thing to us we have to have good voice quality and we will let you know our internet access suffer if that means that our voice quality is going to be good well we can do that. We can, you know, identify and arrange bandwidth in a way that the voice traffic is going to be delivered first. So, you know, this is a high level overview of class of service. Obviously, we're going to dive into this more, um, but it's important, you know, for you to understand that class of service gives us the ability to assign within an individual bandwidth stream um, what our customer has prioritized is most important to them in a particular scenario out of you know voice video data internet access those are mainly the four that we um, interact with out of those four if they say first we want voice then we want internet access and then our you know data connections just regular data connections to our server environment um, is last because we only dump information there you know every night and so we really don't need a high priority placed on that we can absolutely do that quality of service is something else that you're gonna hear um, as opposed to breaking it down as opposed to breaking down packets within a bandwidth stream this is where you in you know you can assign performance values to an entire bandwidth stream meaning if we have the ability to um, you know deliver service to a building with multiple providers coming into that building we can assign you know which one is going to be um, delivered more quickly again this is really where um, you know class of service comes in is for voice over IP or hosted PBX a lot of times that is what people want is they want clear voice traffic um, so you know you can see kind of what most people identify 
as critical applications for them you know voice and then video or internet access you know business critical applications bulk data as I said meaning you know data that they maybe ship off to a server environment once a day and then you know best effort obviously is for anything that's left over um, it's important for you to understand what that is just because a lot of clients are going to ask you about it you won't bump into it on a day-to-day -day basis it's not as important for you to start to learn as the different types of connections um, but it is important for you to know if somebody asks you if we can do you know COS, QoS, class of service, quality of service the answer to that is absolutely yes so um, you know again this has been a high level overview of the network services the different types of connections that you're going to encounter on a day-to-day -day basis this is the base that everything is built upon so learn this know this you will encounter this daily so um, make sure that you are as familiar with it as you are um, with the back of your hand guys this has been another training with blue equinox and we will see you next time